Howdy and welcome to Meetings and Math. You are here for section 2.7 dilations. The essential question is, how does a dilation change the image of a figure? You're going to need your Jaguar dots on section 2.7, a pen or a pencil, and as always, bring your perseverance and your self-confidence. So before we begin the work on dilations, let's go ahead and take care of some definitions so we know what we're talking about and you understand the directions. A dilation is a transformation in which a figure is enlarged or reduced with respect to a point called the center of dilation. With dilations, the pre-image and the image, they are similar. Now I know we've been doing a lot of congruencies and remember congruent means the same shape, shape and size. Dilation is similar, and similar means that they are the same shape, but our size is going to be different. And you can determine the scale factor by finding the ratio of the corresponding sides of the pre-image and image. To dilate a figure with respect to the origin, you're going to multiply the coordinates of the pre-image by the scale factor, which we're going to call K. If K is greater than one, this is going to be an enlargement. And if K is between zero and one, it's going to be a reduction. In other words, if this is a fraction, so, or a decimal that's between zero and one. And so your original order pair is going to be X, Y. And so your new order pair is going to be K, X, or taking your X coordinate and multiplying it by K, and K, Y, or taking your Y coordinate and multiplying it by K. So we're going to look at this pre-image ABCD and we're going to make the image rectangle ABCD after we dilate it with a scale factor of two. So what that means is we are going to take that scale factor of two and we're going to multiply every single coordinate there by two. So let's first find our vertices of the pre-image. So A right here, that is negative one, negative two. B is negative one, zero. C is one, zero, and D is one, negative two. So if we go back to our rule, if we look at it right here, what it's saying is, is it says take that scale factor. So the scale factor is two, and it's saying take your original coordinate, x, y, and multiply it by two. So our new one is going to be two times x and two times whatever we had for y. So we'll take our a, and now it's going to be a prime, and we're going to take two times our x, which was negative one, and then two times our y, which was negative two. So that new vertice is negative two, negative four. So let's go ahead and graph that. Negative two, negative four, backwards two, down four is right here. Okay, let's go ahead and look at b. So b prime, we're going to take each coordinate and multiply it by two. So two times negative one, and two times the y coordinate, which was zero, which means b prime becomes two times negative one, which is negative two, and two times zero, which is zero. So our new point is negative two, zero. Two, zero, right there, would be b prime. And let's go ahead and look at c. So C prime used to be one, zero. So now we're gonna multiply those each by two. So two times, which was one, and two times was zero. So that is going to be become, two times one is two, and two times zero is zero. So two, zero. So over two of zero, so that is now C prime. And then D prime, we're gonna multiply each of those by two. So two times one, and two times negative two. So D prime becomes two times one, which is two, and two times negative two, which is negative four. So this is, did it get bigger or did it get smaller? It got bigger. So this is an enlargement. And that goes back to our rule, which said if K is greater than one, K is greater than one, so it is an enlargement. It follows our rule. So the sides got bigger. And you can see, this side used to be two, and now it's how long? It's one, two, three, four. 
This side used to be two, and now it's one, two, three, four. So each of those sides also got twice as big. So let's look at the next one. Draw the image of triangle EFG after dilation with a scale factor of 0 0.5 and decide if it's an enlargement or a reduction. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna change my 0 0.5 though to one half. Um, for me, that's easier to work with, but if you wanna work with 0 0.5, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pick a more contrasting color this time. Um, I'm gonna use pink and green this time. I just want a little more of a contrast. So let's go ahead and just write down the original. So let's write down E is the point negative two, negative two. F is the point negative two, four. And G is the point four, negative four. Now, I want you to make a prediction. If we have a scale factor of 0 0.5, what is your prediction? Is it your prediction that this is going to be an enlargement or reduction? I want you to write down your prediction and then let's see if you're right or wrong. All right, so since this has a scale factor of 0 0.5, we're going to take half of the X and half of the Y. And so we're going to make some magic with that. So E prime is going to equal one half of the X, the X was negative two, and one half of the Y, which was also negative two. And so E prime is going to equal one half of negative two would be negative one. So negative one, negative one. Let's go ahead and graph that. Negative one, negative one would be right here. So that would be our E prime. So let's go ahead and do F and G. Go ahead and pause it while you do F and G and then come on back and see where you land. Okay, so F prime, you would have taken one half of negative two and one half of four, which means you would have ended up at negative one, two. So negative one and up two. So that would have been F prime. And then G prime, you would have taken one half of four and then one half of negative four. So your in coordinates for G prime would have been one half of four, which is two negative two. So over two and down two, and that would have been G prime. So your answer would have been So what do you think? Is that an enlargement or a reduction? Since it got smaller, it would be a reduction. So for these ones, it's usually easier to use the algebraic reasoning for them and then doing the graph just because um, it's just easier to do it that way. But we do need to understand how the graphs work because you could be given like this one right here. The figure, the black image, in other words, the darker one is a dilation of the figure in gray are the pre-image. So the lighter one is the original one, and then the darker one is what you are going to go to. So if we look at this very first one, the lighter one is what we started with, and then we went to the darker one. So if we look at that one right there, that would be a reduction. So let's go ahead and write down reduction because that's what we did. And the question is, how did I get there? And so what we wanna do is we wanna look at the point. It doesn't take a whole lot of points to figure it out. I actually don't have to do all of the points. I just need to do enough that I can see the pattern. I'm probably gonna start with the outside ones and not the inside ones. So let's go ahead and start with this one right here. And you can know it goes out to negative 10 and one, two. So this is the point negative 10 and up two. And then it went out to the point that matches it. The corresponding point is right there, which is negative five, one. And so you ask yourself, what did I do to 10 to get to five? And so the easiest way to do it is to actually set up an equation. So what did you do to 10, negative 10, so negative 10 times what, remember our what is K, is equal to negative five. And you solve that equation. So negative 10 times K is equal to negative five. And so in other words, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 10, so K, is equal to, and then I look at this one right here. Oops, don't forget the negative. Negative five over negative 10 would be one half. So it looks like K is equal to one half. I'm gonna go ahead and use that other coordinate just to make sure that that is exactly what it is. But instead of solving the equation, I'm gonna test it out. So this would be two times K is equal to one. So two times K is equal to one. We know K is one half. 
So is two times one half equal to one? Yes, it is. So it looks like K is equal to one half. So it, the scale factor is one half, or you could say 0 0.5. Both of those would be correct. So we just took a point and we figured out what did I do to get from one to the other. And we could use the other points to double check and make sure that we did the right thing. Let's go ahead and look at this other one. If we look at this other one, that we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick a point and then we're going to go to it. But we are going from the light gray out to the dark color. Is that an enlargement or a reduction? And that would be an enlargement because it got bigger. And let's go ahead and pick any of the numbers we want. doesn't matter which one I pick. I'm just going to pick something that looks like it's going to be easy to work with. And that looks like it'll be easy to work with. And so going from this out to this. So my original was two, three, so over two and up three. And what did I multiply this by to get to this one over six and up nine? Okay, so remember, we're trying to figure out what did I multiply two by to get to six and three by to get to nine. So two, times what is equal to six. That's just a recursive way to write K. So two times what is equal to six. So I can divide both sides by two. K is equal to three. So it looks like my scale factor is three, but let's go try that out. Three K, three times what is equal to nine. Let's go ahead and try that. So we're gonna substitute it in it is three times three equal to nine. Yes, it is. So that looks like it works nicely. So my scale factor is three. There are other ways I could figure it out. I could have looked at the sides and I could have said, okay, this side is how much of this side? That's another way I can figure it out. Um, but right now we are looking at the coordinates to help us figure it out. What I'd like you to do today is I'd like you to think about some real life examples where a dilation might actually come in handy. What are some things where you might want to look at something where you dilated it, where you took something that was small and made it big or something that was big and you'd make a smaller example of it. Thank you so much for joining us today. I remember be kind to one another because we can always use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.